What up, you cinephile? Welcome to Cinema Recap. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the 2011 sci-fi action film, I Am Number 4. Inside, two people are fast asleep, until they hear something rattling outside. The older man gets up to check it out, grabbing a knife, but he doesn't see anything out the window. He turns back to the younger boy in relief when suddenly the wall caves in and an alien creature attacks him. The younger boy quickly rolls out of the house and runs through the forest the alien monster hot on his tail. The boy seems to have supernatural abilities, easily leaping fast distances and landing unharmed. Well, he loses the creature, but someone else grabs him by the throat. It's another alien, and the alien snatches a mysterious glowing necklace from the throat and with a knife, kills the boy, who then turns into ash and disappears. And our alien adds the charm from the boy's necklace to his collection. Scene Shift to a boy named Daniel, riding a jet ski through the ocean. Around his neck is that same mysterious necklace from before. Daniel's showing off his impressive tricks out on the water, and his friends later tease him for showing off. Later that night at a bonfire on the beach, Daniel gets a text from a beautiful girl named Nicole to meet him near the pier for a swim. He wades into the water to meet her, and as they're flirting, Daniel's leg starts to burn and glow, a third scar's developing. Well, he drops under the water, clutching his leg. In the water, he sees visions of an alien that killed the young boy. Well, Nicole's all terrified about his glowing leg and gets out of the water, telling her friends about it, that he's some sort of freak. So Daniel wakes up the next morning, alone on the beach, the new scar on his leg, raw and red. Another man approaches, holding a silver glowing knife. Daniel mournfully tells the man, whose name is Henry, that number three is dead. Now that Nicole has seen Daniel's glowing leg, their cover's compromised, and so they must leave the area. As Henry packs up their stuff in a jeep, a lizard skitters across the pier and into their bags. Henry's not Daniel's father, but a warrior from their home planet, assigned to keep Daniel safe. From his real father, Daniel has inherited some kind of box, but he won't receive it until the time is right. We find out that the scars on his legs are signs that the Mogadorians, the aliens that are hunting him, and have just killed number three, have found him. He got his first scar when they landed on Earth, and the second years later, when the Mogadorians killed number two. Last night was his third scar, which meant that they killed number three as well. You see, when Daniel was just a child, the Mogadorians invaded his home planet, Florian. Nine gifted children escaped, the last of their kind. Now with the three gifted children dead, Daniel, who is number four, knows that he's next. Now Daniel and Henry check into a motel room and procure new identities. They end up in Paradise, Ohio, at an abandoned house. This time around, Daniel's not going to go to any schools or play on teams, because it's better to stay invisible. Meanwhile, the lizard sneaks out of the jeep and into the bushes, shape-shifting into something much larger. The two hear something rustling outside. We have the silver glowing knife at the ready, and the lights quickly switched off. Daniel hides while Henry goes out to investigate. But he sees nothing in the rain except a sad little dog. Now Daniel, whose new name is John, takes the dog into the house. They name him Bernie, after a football player whose poster's hanging in the house. Now meanwhile, back at their old accommodation on the beach, a blonde woman ransacks the place looking for something. She can't find what she's looking for, and thus proceeds to set the whole place on fire. The fire threatens to engulf her, but a blue light emanates from her, and she walks away unharmed. So John is persuading Henry to let him go to school, as long as he checks his phone about every hour so Henry knows he's safe. And Bernie the dog secretly follows him to school. While waiting outside the principal's office to be enrolled, John notices Sarah, who's in trouble for posting pictures of the teachers on her website without permission. Well, Sarah guides John to his locker, but when he tells her that his name is John Smith, she's not looking like she believes him. So John's going about the school day trying to be invisible like Henry told him, but notices when a group of popular boys with a guy named Mark as their leader bully another student by hitting him in the face with a football. Well, John throws that football back to the bully so hard that he falls into the bushes. Sarah saw all that and took photos of him for the website, which Henry gets promptly deleted. Remember, no evidence on the internet of John's existence or the Mogadorians will find him. Now back at the previous residence, the Mogadorians have located the now burned down house. They're sniffing around, and from the scent alone, they can tell that John is still alive. Back at school, Mark the Bully comes to talk to John to dissuade him from getting close to Sam, the science nerd that they like to bully. 
As Mark's talking, John's hands are lighting up and glowing. He tries to hide it, but ends up rushing to a supply closet and passing out. He wakes up a little bit later with Henry looming over him. He explains that his gifts are developing, the abilities inherited from his parents called legacies, and that he has to learn to control them before he can go back to school. So John sneaks out of the house and practices controlling his powers, like the lights in his hands, his super strength, and super speed. Meanwhile, a Mogadorian disguises himself as a human to procure groceries and loads up several different frozen turkeys into a truck to feed an alien monster. Night falls over town, and John tries to talk to Sarah, who invites him to her house for dinner. On their way, they see Sam being yelled at by his stepdad. Now at dinner, John really seems to enjoy himself, as it's his first time interacting with a real family, all the while ignoring Henry's calls. After dinner, the two go up to Sarah's room to talk. They get really close and almost kiss when Bernie starts barking outside her house, ruining the moment. And as John exits the house, he gets spotted by Mark, who's parked right outside. So the next day at school, Sam warns John that Mark and his cronies are after him for getting so close to Sarah. Mark pulls another prank on Sam, splattering red paint in his locker and ruining a picture Sam keeps of him and his dad. While John questions Sam about his father, Henry does his own investigation using the internet. It seems that Sam's father, Malcolm, believed in aliens and went missing mysteriously one night in the forest. Henry, looking for clues, heads down to Malcolm's old workplace, a steel factory, and finds a hole on the ground that leads to a dark room. On the walls are chalk drawings that match the alien symbol on John's necklace, and on the floor, Henry finds a glowing blue geode. So Henry takes the geode home and ponders the work that Malcolm was doing while John gets a text from Sarah to see him at the county fair tonight. Despite misgivings, he meets up with her, and Sarah confesses that she used to date Mark. The two then decide to go on a scary hayride, when something with green vision stalking them. Towards the end of that ride, they get attacked by Mark and his buddies. One of them grabs Sarah and takes her away. John doesn't realize that it's just a prank, beating all the guys up and accidentally revealing his superpowers to Sam, who is watching the events unfold nearby. The man that takes Sarah leads her to Mark, who wants to question her about their breakup. John gets there, almost hurting Mark from his rage before Sarah stops him. Now back at Sarah's house, John tries to stay away from her, knowing that he can't get too close because of who he is. But they end up kissing at her front door. And on the walk home, he discovers a new power when he suddenly bursts a light bulb on the street. He then gets a text from Sam, who's seen what John can do and wants to discuss it with him. And so they meet in a garage, and Sam begs to know the truth about aliens. Well, John reluctantly reveals that aliens are real, but forces him to promise not to tell anybody. And the next morning, the town sheriff, who happens to be Mark's father, visits to figure out what happened the night before. John dodges the question, and once the sheriff leaves, Henry decides that they need to leave town right away, not because of the sheriff, but because of a video that came out online of John's glowing scar back at the beach. Well, John refuses to go because he's taken an interest in Sarah and gets into a fight with Henry. Henry explains that John is important to the fate of the world. Only him and the other five gifted children can stop the Mogadorians from continuing to decimate planets. And with that, Henry gives John a day to say goodbye. Meanwhile, that blonde woman who burned down the beach house finds the video posted on the internet of John's glowing leg. Now, John plans to go to Sarah's house, but can't seem to find Henry anywhere. He calls him, but someone else answers, and gives John an address to come to. John calls up Sam to get help, and they drive to the address the man on the phone specified, while John clues Sam in on more information about aliens and Mogadorians. Sam's brought a gun, but John refuses to let him leave the car because he might get hurt. However, that doesn't stop him. They sneak around the place, observing a man leave in a car. Believing the house to be empty of enemies, John uses his powers to unlock the door and get inside, using his glowing hand as a flashlight. He finds Henry's knife, noting the walls are covered in newspaper clippings of mysterious disappearances and alien sightings. They find Henry chained up in the basement, and John goes to release him when suddenly another man appears, holding Sam at gunpoint. John gets his powers to switch off the lights while Henry disarms the man, who turns out to be a regular human conspiracy theorist that made a plan with the Mogadorians to trap John. We need to leave. They're coming. And the Mogadorians arrive, tramping down the staircase into the basement with a gun that shoots out red fire. Henry attacks him, 
giving John and Sam a chance to run. The three get into a car, and Sam has misplaced the keys. Henry tells John to start the engine with his powers, but John can't get it moving before a Mogadorian comes rushing out, leaping on the hood of the car and stabbing Henry right in the heart just as the car starts. Once they get to a safe spot, Henry, with his dying breath, tells John to find the others using the glowing blue geode he found earlier. As John and Sam ponder what to do next, the Mogadorians are displeased that they didn't manage to capture John, and so they kill the two human conspiracy theorists in the basement. The police find their bodies, and while there are no leads, they're sure that Henry and John have something to do with it. So Sarah is taken in for questioning. John knows he should leave town, but instead has Sam drop him off at Sarah's house to say his goodbye first. He finds her up on a roof outside her bedroom window, while a party's blaring downstairs. John struggles to say goodbye, evading her questions, just as the police show up to arrest him. She slips off the roof, almost falling to her death, but John uses his levitation power to save her, much to the amazement of the partygoers and the police. Well, they run away hand in hand, trying to evade the sheriff and his son Mark, who gets captured by the Mogadorians. Sarah takes John to the dark room in high school, and that's where Mark leads the Mogadorians. The two try to run, but two Mogadorians catch up with them. However, the blonde woman from earlier shows up to save the day, using alien technology to strike back at the Mogadorians. The woman has powers just like John, along with more advanced ones, like the ability to teleport. She takes out both the Mogadorians and reveals herself to be number six. Her protector, like Henry, is also dead. Sarah talks about a tunnel under school that can help them get out, as the other Mogadorians have the high school surrounded. Meanwhile, Sam's waiting outside the school in his truck, with Bernie the dog in the front seat. The vehicle in front of him starts shaking, and suddenly two aliens come out. Bernie starts to bark, and then shifts into a monster himself. Well, now terrified, Sam rushes out of the car into the high school to find John. He tells John what happened and gives him the other side of the blue glowing rock. When one of the alien monsters crashes in through the window, John leads the monster away from his friends and uses his powers to take it on. He's about to get chewed up when Bernie, who has transformed into a different kind of monster, comes to the rescue. John uses the opportunity to help number six, and together, they kill two Mogadorians, including the one who stabbed Henry. Now, number six explains that Bernie the dog is a chimera from Lorien who came to protect him. Bernie wins his battle with the alien monster, but he's severely wounded. More Mogadorians appear, and even Sam manages to take one down. One of the monsters grabs number six and flies her into the sky, but John uses the light energy hand power to save her, and she kills it. He then uses his powers to destroy the canister of red energy strapped to one of the Mogadorians, causing them to explode. That explosion decimates the entire stadium, but number six throws that protective shield over John, and they emerge victorious. Now, after the battle, number six and John put the two pieces of the glowing rock together, which shows them the location of the other gifted kids. Mark gives John the box he was supposed to inherit from Henry when the time was right. He had stolen it from the evidence room of the police station. Then John and Sarah share a final kiss goodbye, and Bernie appears wounded but alive. They get into Sam's truck, leaving Mark and Sarah behind, and they drive away from Paradise, Ohio to continue their journey. And that wraps that up. It's a pretty cool action movie. I don't know, if you were in John's place, would you have done something differently? Let us know in the comment section below with the hashtag CinemaRecap. Till next time.